In a perfect world, Asian American actors could star in a film where their race was incidental, they'd get to be the good guys, the female lead would be portrayed as smart and competent, they'd avert any negative stereotypes, and the film itself would be worth watching. Shockingly enough, that world was 1937. Give me a chance and I'll show you. Daughter of Shanghai did indeed come out in 1937, starred Asian American actors Philip Ahn and Anna Mae Wong in the lead roles, and had virtually no stereotyping. In your prayers tonight, say a prayer for me, Lu Chang, to give me courage, to make me fearless. It's a simple enough movie, following a woman called Lan Ying Kwan, whose father gets murdered for knowing too much, she goes undercover to investigate a smuggling ring, and is helped by the only police officer who believes her. It hits most of the same beats as a typical action movie, but in this case the simplicity is what makes it so brilliant. During a press release, the Library of Congress had this to say about the film. B-films during the studio era often resonate decades later because they explore issues and themes not found in higher budget pictures. Daughter of Shanghai was truly more Wong's personal vehicle than any of her other films. Anna Mae Wong was born Wong Lutsong in California to second generation Chinese parents. Her story is a textbook case of many third generation children, a mixture of her ancestors' culture and the one she was born into. Acting for film was not considered a respectable career for a Chinese girl, and in China, actresses were seen as little better than prostitutes. She eventually quit school to focus on acting altogether, and anglicised her name to Anna May. Her first lead role was the age of 19 in The Toll of the Sea, an adaptation of Madame Butterfly, which was also one of the first Technicolor films. The film was a hit, and got everyone talking about this hot new thing who was both Chinese and American. As one reviewer put it, she should be seen again and often on the big screen. Douglas Fairbanks was particularly impressed by her, and gave her a big supporting role in his epic The Thief of Baghdad. There, Anna Mae portrayed a spy posing as a slave girl, conspiring to keep the princess from finding love. Although it was another hit that turned Anna Mae into a household name, it spelled some all-too-familiar danger signs. Faster, faster! The Dragon Lady was a popular villain character during the Yellow Peril, essentially an Asian femme fatale. The villain has a sidekick who is manipulative, sexually aggressive, and quite violent. Most of Anna Mae's early roles were playing this type of character. A charitable interpretation would suggest that her striking looks made her more suited to playing a vampy character, but the reality is probably closer to the fact that the Hayes Code prevented any kind of miscegenation on the big screen, so it prevented Anna Mae from playing a leading lady opposite a white man. Anna Mae was beloved by the public and was a fashion icon, but these laws made producers reluctant to cast her in a leading role. So the Dragon Lady parts were a compromise. She grew annoyed at constantly being stereotyped, and after 1931's Daughter of the Dragon, she refused to play them anymore. Why is it that the screen Chinese is always the villain? And so crude a villain. Murderous. Treacherous. A snake in the grass. We are not like that. How could we be? With a civilization that is so many times older than the West. Many times she travelled to Europe to take advantage of the less strict censorship laws. Notably Piccadilly, where press singled her out as the real star of the film, and Jarberhead, the only film in her career where she got to kiss her white co-star. Back in Hollywood, whenever an Asian leading role came up, anime was often passed over in favour of white actresses wearing yellow face. Notable films included The Sun Daughter, The Letter, The Crimson City, Mr. Wu, and most famously, The Good Earth. There seems little for me in Hollywood, because rather than real Chinese, Producers prefer Hungarians, Mexicans, American Indians for Chinese roles. You may be wondering what this has to do with Daughter of Shanghai, but look at the context leading up to this point. It's a B-movie, but compared to some of the other big-budget studio releases, it holds up much better. The Asian leading roles are played by Asian-American actors, and the script was so carefully tailored for Anime Wong that it even had the working title, The Anime Wong Story. Thank you. Her co-star, Philip Ahn, was in a similar boat to her. His career started in the 1930s, and he more often than not played a featured extra until the war years, where he found himself playing a lot of Japanese villains. It got to the degree that he got a lot of hate mail from people who assumed he actually was Japanese when he was really Korean. I've been wondering the same thing. In Daughter of Shanghai, he plays Kim Lee, the detective who helps Lan Ying investigate her father's murder. Averting every single Asian stereotype of the time, he gets to be the hero who is smart, resourceful, and powerful. If a white guy played this part, we'd call it generic. But an Asian man in the 30s? I wasn't born yesterday. Lan Ying is also an awesome lead character. It's possible, isn't it? I can get information that Mr. Lee can't get? Word on the grapevine is that the original script had her as a more passive damsel, but it was eventually reworked to make her an active participant who has a full role in the plot. I've seen how the authorities handle things. 
She gets many awesome moments, especially at the start. This is not the way to Mrs. Hunt. Where she pretends to be dead so she can escape the smugglers and run to safety. Whatever you think, this. She goes undercover and actually gets further than Detective Lee at first. Won't you stop me? Yes. Even though he does more of the heroics in the third act, she still gets several moments of competency that actually put her ahead of many action heroines from the 90s and 2000s. There's a little book in Hartman's desk I'm after. It isn't worth your life. I mentioned earlier that Daughter of Shanghai is a simple movie, but it does have something to say that a 1930s audience might not have picked up on. Note how the villains in the film are all white. Is that so? Mrs. Hunt, Hartman and the smugglers all play an antagonistic role. Go through all this. See who's been talking, and then burn it. The smugglers take advantage of poor immigrants who want to reach America, and then sell them for cheap labour. You use about 50 men and pay us a thousand dollars apiece for them. When we see Hartman in action, most of the immigrants don't appear to speak English. This one says that his money's gone, he won't be able to pay for his lodging after today. Tell him to get out. And in the opening scene, Mrs. Hunt's goons drown them in the sea, rather than be caught by the government. There goes six thousand dollars. In Hartman's club, there's a white dancer called Olga whose sole purpose in the film is to be bitchy to Lan Ying for no apparent reason. He don't need anyone, he told me so. And with Lan Ying as the only non-white dancer in there, the implication is obvious. I told her we didn't need any more girls. I told her different. The only white character in the film who is portrayed as positive and helpful is Kelly, Mrs. Hunt's Irish driver. What are you up to now? Oh, I don't blame you for being suspicious of me. I've been in bad company. And if you take into account the history of Irish oppression, his rebelling against the smugglers in the third act takes on new meaning. The last sequence of the film literally has three characters from nationalities that have traditionally been oppressed in America rebelling against these wealthy wasps who are trying to exploit them. My dear, I'm a businesswoman. You killed my father. Look at other moments where Lan Ying or Detective Lee one-up white characters. At one point, Lee convinces a dumb ship's captain that he's actually speaking Russian when he isn't. Alpha, Beta, Gamma, Delta, Epsilon. Is that Russian? Sure. And his cover is of an ignorant ship's mate. The white characters trust him completely until he's caught helping Lan Ying. Thank you, man. The implication is there that these characters wouldn't suspect an Asian man being smart enough to fool them and sneak around. You know, he could be useful to me. How'd you like to be my interpreter? Instead of supercargo? Yeah. Lan Ying does a similar strategy earlier on in the film, with the way she talks herself into Hartman's club. I closed in Trinidad three weeks ago. I'm just cruising about the island. She's never caught snooping around, and when Hartman finds her in his office in the middle of the night, she covers up by having a drink with him. You're doing a good business. In the first few years of her career, Anna Mae Wong was heavily exoticized in fan magazines, and in most of her roles as well. So in Daughter of Shanghai, she is using people's Orientalism to her advantage. Miss Lena Chen, Daughter of Shanghai! The dance she performs on stage in Hartman's Club is a recreation of her famous one in Piccadilly. The movie itself never exoticizes Lan Ying, and the only time it does is when she's performing on stage to fool everyone. In The Thief of Baghdad, this duplicitous image was used to show her as a villain. In Daughter of Shanghai, it's a heroic act. A first out of farmer's kid. You sure kept the home fires burning. Thank you. Anna Mae said of the film to the press, I like my part in this picture better than any I've ever had before, because this picture gives the Chinese a break. We have sympathetic parts for a change. You make me very proud tonight. And awesomely enough, in 2006, this film was selected for preservation in the National Film Registry. And this list includes groundbreaking classics like The Jazz Singer, Citizen Kane, and Bonnie and Clyde. Flower Drum Song is in the registry for this reason as well. As I said earlier, the film is simple, but the simplicity is what makes it brilliant. It's really a shame that this film isn't shown more or better known, because it is a testament to how Asian Americans were fighting for better representation even back in the 1930s. So we raise a glass to Anna Mae Wong, who in this film finally got to play a character as fearless, powerful and determined as she was herself in real life. Perhaps a change of climate is just what I need. Then it's settled. Does that mean you're asking me to marry you? Hey, Sean, Ma. We'll hope for an any oil work.